Throughout this series of videos, we've seen a number of reactions that can form carbon-carbon single bonds. These include reactions like the alkylation of alkynes, Friedel-Crafts alkylation, Friedel-Crafts acylation, cyanohydrin formation, and the Grignard reaction. The Wittig reaction, however, is unique in that it unites an alkyl halide with an aldehyde or ketone, and in the process, both the sigma and pi bonds of an alkene are formed. In the first step of the reaction, an unhindered alkyl halide is treated with triphenylphosphine. Phosphorus, much like nitrogen, can possess three bonds and a lone pair of electrons. As a result, it can be nucleophilic, and it attacks the alkyl halide in SN2 fashion, thereby displacing the halide leaving group. The product of this step is a phosphonium salt. In the second step of the reaction, a very strong base, typically butyl lithium, is introduced. As a result, the phosphonium salt is deprotonated at the carbon adjacent to the positive phosphorus. The product of this step is known as an illid. It is stabilized by adjacent complementary charges, and since phosphorus can possess an expanded octet, there is resonance as well. And in this resonance form, all atoms possess no formal charge. In the third and final step of the reaction, an aldehyde or ketone is introduced. The ilid attacks the carbonyl carbon of the aldehyde or ketone, and this displaces carbonyl pi electrons onto oxygen. The immediate product is a beta -ene but it rapidly forms a four-membered ring due to the attraction of the oxygen anion for the positive phosphorus. And this four-membered ring is known as an oxophosphatane. The oxophosphatane then extrudes triphenylphosphine oxide. This process can be described by two mechanistic arrows showing that the carbon phosphorus and carbon oxygen bonds are severed. This is driven by the stability of phosphorus oxygen bonds, and the product is a cis alkene in which both the sigma and pi bonds of the alkene were formed during this reaction. In the following specific example, benzyl bromide is treated sequentially with triphenylphosphine, butyl lithium, and propionaldehyde to ultimately afford a cis-alkene product. The reaction begins with SN2 displacement of bromide from benzyl bromide by the attack of triphenylphosphine. The phosphonium salt is the product of this step. When butyl lithium is added in the second step, a proton adjacent to the positive phosphorus is removed to generate an anion at that center. Recall that the adjacent complementary charges of the illid stabilize one another and there is a resonance form without any formal charges as well. When propionaldehyde is introduced in the third step of the reaction, the illid attacks the carbonyl carbon. This displaces the carbonyl pi bonding electrons onto oxygen. The immediate product is a beta -E but the betaene rapidly closes through intramolecular nucleophilic attack 
to form a four-membered ring known as the oxophosphatane. Finally, the loss of triphenylphosphine oxide occurs. This happens through simultaneous cleavage of the carbon-oxygen and carbon-phosphorus bonds. It also affords the cis-alkene product. The preference for the formation of the cis-alkene rather than the more stable trans-alkene is certainly not intuitive. But we can explain it if we re-examine the attack of the ilid on the carbonyl in more detail. Now I'll pause here to note that this is a little advanced. If you are in an introductory organic chemistry course, your instructor may not expect you to know this part. However, if you would like to know, for your own edification, we need only utilize the other resonance form of the ilid, the one that contains the carbon-phosphorus pi bond. In the transition state for the attack of the ilid on the carbonyl, the pi bonds of the carbonyl and ilid align parallel to one another so that there is a continual overlap of their p orbital. Given this geometric constraint, during the nucleophilic attack of the ilid on the carbonyl, there are only two ways to draw the transition state, and these are shown in Newman projections here. If the carbonyl and the ilid pi bonds are aligned parallel to one another to ensure continual overlap of their p orbitals, then these two transition states are possible. To derive these transition states, one component was held in a constant conformation, and that is the aldehyde, while the other component, the ilid, was added to it in one of two orientations. Notice that one orientation has a steric clash between the substituent on the ilid and the substituent on the aldehyde. This transition state is therefore disfavored. The preferred transition state is the one that places the two substituents far apart from one another and therefore exhibits minimal steric hindrance. In these transition state drawings, we were looking down the axis of the forming carbon-carbon sigma bond. That formed the circle or the barrel of the Newman projection. Once that new carbon-carbon sigma bond is formed, the molecule can then be rotated around that new bond to place it in other conformations such as the one shown here. When viewed from the side, this conformation can also be drawn as a skeletal structure with wedges and dashes to denote the same orientation of the groups stemming from the central new carbon-carbon sigma bond. Notice that when the betaene closes to form the oxophosphatane, the two R groups, which in this case are phenyl and ethyl, are on the same side of the ring. Simultaneous cleavage of the carbon-phosphorus and carbon-oxygen bonds forms the new carbon-carbon pi bond. And since this happens in a concerted fashion, there is no opportunity for rotation. So the phenyl and the ethyl groups must remain cis to one another in the final product. In summary, the Wittig reaction allows the union of an unhindered alkyl halide with an aldehyde or ketone so as to form a cis-alkene product. 
the reaction entails sequential treatment of the alkyl halide with triphenylphosphine, butyl lithium, and finally the aldehyde or ketone. And during the course of these three steps, both the bonds of the alkene are formed. That includes the sigma and the pi bond. And this is rather unique. No other single reaction we've seen accomplishes this. The preference for the cis configuration of the product can be explained by examining the transition state for the last step of the Wittig reaction. A transition state with minimal steric hindrance ultimately leads to the cis alkene. Preceding was an excerpt from the book Introductory Organic Reaction Mechanisms, A Color-Coded Approach to Arrow Pushing. If you found this video to be helpful, you may be interested in the complete book, which is available in ebook format from Scribd, in paperback from Amazon, or in paperback at a discounted price from Lulu.